So on Monday, uh, everybody hear me okay? Yes. All right, good deal, good deal. So on Monday, I was praying and just talking to the Lord, and um, I, I try not to do uh, a lot of uh, stuff on Mondays, except clean house, run errands, stuff like that, you know. Just, just chill out on Mondays. And, uh, but I love it when the Lord starts talking and he'll start showing me things and he'll remind me of things in the Bible, stories in the Bible. And most of the time, y'all know that I, I've been preaching a lot out of the New Testament. And, but I want to say this morning that the Old Testament is a type and a shadow of Jesus. It always pointed, everything in the Old Testament pointed to God and the redemption through Jesus Christ. Everything, everything. Especially in uh, Isaac, when he was offering up his son uh, on the altar, um, Isaac was being up. Did I get that right? Was being off, thank you. Abraham was offering Isaac up on the altar, and that was a sacrificial type of God sending his son into so that mankind could be redeemed. So I started thinking about David and Goliath. Has everybody heard the story of David and Goliath? I don't want to assume anything. We are all familiar with David and Goliath. So I was asking the Lord, okay, what, what do you want to call this thing? And I'm not, you know, I don't get caught up in the titles of messages, but I thought, I heard rally in the valley. Because sometimes we get sucked down into the valleys. Because things happen in life. Life ain't always good, but God is. I'm going to say that again. Now that's just reality this morning. Life ain't always good. But God is, because God is good, God is faithful, yes. and we heard last week that every good and perfect gift comes down, yes. cascading yes. like a river, yes. flooding from the Father of lights. Yes. So he's a good God, and he gives good gifts. Yes. Alright? And so we've been talking about that. We've been talking about transition. We've been talking about unlimited going through change. For those of you who don't know... Starting June 1st, we will be uh, the, the sole leasers of this building. We are taking the training wheels off. And so we're in transition. And sometimes when you're in transition, you have to face a few Goliaths. Yeah, amen. That's right. Because when you're in transition, there will always be something when you are moving from this place to that place, right. you will find yourself having opposition That's to get right. to the Amen. new place or the new season. That's yes. right. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Somebody better listen this yeah. morning. That's right. And any time you are about to come into a great victory in your life, the enemy will put people, circumstances, situation, and garbage in front of us to see if we're going to inhale it or if we're going to kick it right on down the road. Amen. Now, I may preach this morning. Yeah. All right. All right? Yeah. So, what, what's happening here with David and Goliath is there's about to be a rally in the valley. But let's look at this next slide. Because we got to know a little bit about David and his character and about him before we can understand what's about to happen. How many of us need to know ourselves before we jump into something? Yeah. Amen. I don't know who that was for. Probably me. David was the eighth son of Jesse. The youngest son. Not the most popular. Not the best in his class. Not the top of the line. Not even always the chosen, as we will see. How many of you felt like that's been you before? I used to play Red Rover, uh, and, and I would be the last one called over. <laughs> <laughs> or or, or I, we would be chosen for games, and um, it, it, I wouldn't be chosen for the game. And also, I was the tallest girl in my class probably for till I was 12. 
And sometimes that feels a little odd, you know, because they think you look like a giant. Now, according to that, I do look like a giant in comparison. Have you all ever seen our hands up next to each other? Okay, we'll do that. Or our feet. Okay, all right. Anyway, I've been told I wear skis. But that's okay. Fine foundation. Hey, thank you. So let's look at David. He was the eighth son of Jesse. He was 15 years old when Samuel came into Bethlehem. And I got a kick out of this. You know it is said, Loretta. Samuel comes walking into Bethlehem. Now this is after God said Saul's kingdom is done. That's a whole other message in itself. So all of a sudden, Samuel comes into Bethlehem, and all of a sudden, they start going, wait a minute, are you coming in peace? Because any time the prophet came to town, y'all better wake up and get ready, because if a prophet's coming to town, he's got something to say, and there's going to be shake, rattle, and roll happening when the prophet comes into the town. He said, no, we're here in peace. So Saul is ending his reign, and all of a sudden he's looking at all of Jesse's sons. He looks at seven of Jesse's sons, and all of a sudden Saul, uh, Samuel looks at one of them and says, Ooh, he is good looking. He got to be a. And the Lord says, Nope, that ain't the one. You are looking on the outward appearance, but I am looking at the heart. Yes. <laughs> And we've been talking about that a lot lately. What is going on in our hearts? Because what's going on in our heart is going to come out in our behavior. Amen. What's going on in our heart is going to come out of our mouth. And God is doing some rotor rootering. And this is a good thing. This is a beautiful thing. Because when the light of God shines on a situation... It is not to tear something up. It is to heal it and rebuild it. Amen. So I say light be in every one of your lives. Light be. So all of a sudden, well, let me tell you this. How many of y'all know David played the harp? He was, an, he was an anointed harp player. He was a keeper of the sheep. But all of a sudden, Samuel comes in and he goes through this line of people who look like they should have been the best. They look like they could have, yeah, man, oh, he looks good. Oh, yeah, he's a great talker. Oh, yeah, look how tall he is. There is a statistic, if y'all heard, in business, especially among men, that if they're tall, they probably will get the job, unfortunately, more so. But I want to tell you that I have a God who doesn't see that and can put us in the right place at the right time, and we have the favor of the Lord upon our lives. Yes, so all of a sudden, Samuel says, wait a minute. Some ain't right here. The Lord says, I haven't chosen any of these. He says, do you have any other sons? He said, yeah, I do, but he's out back tending sheep. And he said, I'm not sitting down until you bring him. We're not just going to not sit down. We're not eating. Honey, I bet you they high tail to die very quickly. <laughs> they go and get David. And they said, yes. Yes, he's the one. He's the one that God has chosen. Fifteen years old, he's the one that God had chosen. Fifteen years old. I knew at the age of 14 God called me to full-time ministry. But if I would have taken this, at the age of 15, I would not have been ready. David waited and was developed in his character, his attitude, and accountability. Because if David had not understood accountability and authenticity and how to get under authority, David could not have ever led in authority. That's right, that's right. So yes, God may have called you, but don't go try jumping in somebody else's shoes because they don't fit. <laughs> And it may not be time. That's right. Time is essential. Yes. Timing is essential. Yes, Let's go to this next slide. The favor that was on God, on, on that God had put on David, was not for David, uh, David's status, but it was for his service. Yes. I know sometimes we look around, man, God's favor is all over Scott. 
God is just pouring out his blessing. God is doing this. God is doing that. God is doing that. But I'm telling you, there is greater accountability with what's going on That's with right. Scott uh -huh. right now and all of that favor. And it ain't for Scott to get the big head. It's for Scott to be humble and walk in the humility of the Lord and to serve. Yes. How many of you want to serve? Yes. Yes. Let's yeah. get humble. Yeah. Is that all right, Loretta? Right. Let's get humble. Yeah. Let's say it ain't me, God. Yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm just available. So yeah. David had to, sh I'm going to say it. David had to show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. David had to show up yeah. to get used. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. David had to show up. I know we holler sometimes, oh, I want to do this, oh, I want to do that. If you don't show up, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so he was anointed as king, but he waited 15 years. He waited 15 years. Process and timing are important because this leads to that. And that leads to this. And if I am not responsible and accountable here, I can't progress to the next place effectively. And so when we gripe because I feel like I'm in a dead-end job right here, it may be because God is developing some character. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Developing some character in us. When we buck against authority, when we buck against those who are over us, because why they try to be mean to me like that? Why they want to talk to me and disrespect me like that? Honey, I guarantee you God is developing character and stability in you. I need a drink. <laughs> Process and timing are essential. Are essential. You can't jump over A to C yeah. without going through B yeah. because what we learn right here develops us for this next place. Yeah. Amen. We started out in a hotel, didn't we, Dave? Yeah. We weren't ready for this then. No. That's right. Little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept. The scripture says, a little here, a little there. It's growing. It's developing. God is developing character in us. He's developing accountability. He's developing authenticity in us. He is developing stability in us. I remember when I was working for Missouri Global Apostolic Mission and how I started helping them was I started working a book table. I wasn't up there preaching and teaching. I started working a book table to help them. And I did it to, I'm going to say this, come on. I did it to the best of my ability and I wasn't paid for it. Yeah. Yes. I did it to the best of my ability and I wasn't always recognized for it. That's right. Are y'all hearing me this morning? That's all right. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the Lord says to the leader, Regina, let her teach in this seminar. Let her have a session to teach. And then the Lord said, ask her to lead worship for this conference. The Lord said, ask her to lead this conference with you. But you've got to understand, we have got to be faithful where we are. Mm -hmm. I don't care if that's vacuum in our house. Yeah. Did I say that, didn't I? Mm -hmm. right. I don't care if it's in the little bitty thing. I had God tell me one time, and it was for Joyce Meyer, I ain't going to lie to you, because she said it. God convicted her about putting her shopping cart back up. 99% of the time, I put my shopping cart back up in that rack. Now, I'm not telling y'all to do that. I'm just telling you how he does me. Yeah. And that's a message right there. Because what the Lord tells you and how he wants you to function in your gift and your calling will not be the same thing as his. Mm -hmm. 
I ain't picking on these two. <laughs> it's going to be different. It is. So David, we're going to see this in a little bit about David. Now look, here's what happened. We have Goliath. How many of you know who Goliath is? I'm going to tell you a quick story about him. According to the Ulster Medical Society in May of 2014, they were talking about Goliath. And he had a hereditary uh, issue that had to do with, uh, uh, it was called uh, hereditary gigantism. And it was talking about the pituitary gland and the adrenal gland. And uh, this guy was huge. This guy wasn't no small guy. He was over nine feet tall. So all of a sudden, the story here is that they're in the Valley of Elah, and all of a sudden, the Philistine champion, from he's from Gath, he comes out, and look, he's over nine feet tall, he has a bronze helmet, and his coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. Just, just that. This guy was massive. He was a descendant of Nephilim and the Anakites, okay? Now listen, Goliath had three sons, but the third son, get a load of this, this is no joke, had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. Very unique. Very unique. So this was a type of hereditary situation. And so Goliath comes out there taunting the people of Israel. He's got all this armor on. His spearhead weighs 15 pounds, and his armor bearer is carrying the shield. Let's go to this next slide, because I want to show you this. Sometimes when you're in transition from one season or another, Goliath is going to pop up. How many of y'all right now can take just a second, you don't have to say what it is, but you can see in your mind's eye some Goliaths that are staring you down your, your throat right now. How many of y'all see it? Yeah. All right, I want you to take a look at it. Just for a second. It can be people. It can be situations. It starts to manipulate our minds and hearts. It presents itself to prevent us from awakening. I will say it again. It has presented itself, whatever that name is that you're calling it, from awakening to see victory. What God has already done. We have the mindset of believers of waiting on God, I'm going to say it, Terry, to do something rather than to see it from the other side of already done. Yes. Already done on our behalf. Amen. I'm going to tell you, the cross, the grave, and the resurrection did everything. Yes, everything. Everything that it needed to do in our life. There is nothing left undone that God hadn't already done. Yes. And what has to happen is Holy Spirit, wake us up. Yes, yes. yes. amen. Wake us up. Next slide. So Goliath is out there and he's taunting them. He said, hey, y'all come to fight? The Israelites are terrified. They're paralyzed. You know what happened when the spies went out? What happened? When the 12 spies went out? What they say? 10 came back. There are giants in the land. Oh my God, they're giants. It's too big for me. It's too much. I can't handle it. I don't like what's happening. And the other two did what? They said, God will get us. God has already won it. Two of them came back despite the bad report. Two of them said, hey, we're going to take the land. And we're not just going to take the land. We're going to take everything in the land because it belongs to us. Because God said it was so. Because God said it was so. It's mine. The enemy's come to rob you of your relationships. He's come to rob you of your health. He's come to rob you of your sanity. He's come to rob you of your finances. But he has no authority and he is nothing but a liar. So he comes out. 
He says, hey, why don't y'all just choose one? Why don't y'all just choose one to come on out and kill me? I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight for me. And Saul and the Israelites heard this. They were terrified and deeply shaken. Let's go to this next one. And David, the son of Jesse. And Jesse says, Jesse was old here. It lists the kids. He'd already, and the older ones had joined the fight. David, the youngest son. David went back and forth with his father. And still, now, David still tended sheep. I'm, I'm, let's go back to this. The anointed king of Israel is still tending sheep. He could have got the big head. He could have said, y'all don't know who you're talking to. Y'all don't know who I am. Y'all don't know what, I, what I've done. Y'all don't know where I've been. He could have got the big head, but he didn't. For 40 days in the evening, the Philistine champion strutted in front of the Israel. Now, oh, that's taunting. How many of y'all ever had anybody taunt you? Yeah. And it will almost drive you nuts sometimes when people flaunt and taunt in front of you. Let's look at this next one. So Jesse tells David, he said, hey, we're going to get some, a basket, we're going to get some cheese, and we're going to go, I want you to go down there. So David left his sheep. David is doing what this whole time? He, he said that he's following orders. He's following orders. He's being, oh, I'm going to say this word, obedient. Oh, God help us. Y'all know sometimes that feels like an ugly word. You say that up in church because people look, at, people look at you. Please don't tell, don't use that word. To obey is better than sacrifice. That's what the scripture said. To obey is better than sacrifice. So he sees, wants to send these gifts, and he gets to the camp, and, and he hears the, the, um, the battlefield, the shouts, the cries, <coughs> and, um, and the forces stood facing each other against the army. And David left his things with the keeper of the supplies, and he hurried out to greet his brothers. Now this young boy is hurrying to his brothers on the front line, and he's walking to them, and Goliath the Philistine comes out of the ranks, and David hears him shout his usual taunts. Sometimes you just get fed up with hearing the taunts. I know sometimes you just want to throat punch them. You probably can't. I wouldn't advise that. But David was obedient to do the everyday small chores and daily routines at the request of his father, and he tended sheep. And you know what? David was faithful where he was right. because where he was was about to get him to where he was going. And if he wasn't faithful in the small things yes, and he right. didn't despise the small beginnings, he wouldn't have been able to have the development and character of a king. Yes, amen. Let's look at this next one. As soon as the Israelites saw him, they began to run away and fight. In fright, excuse me. Have you seen the giant? Let me tell you what happens sometimes. We all feel insecurities. We all have feelings of doubt and fear. But I believe the Lord wants to shed light on something I just saw right here. Is this phrase, have you seen the giant? See, they started talking to one another. And when you start talking to one another and making the problem bigger than God, and we start talking to one another, and we start saying the giant is more capable than God, and we start running our mouth, and we start running saying, well, you don't know what that preacher did, and you don't know what she said, and we start running our mouth, and we're making situations bigger, and we start by our mouth, our attitude, and the energy that we put behind it, we make that thing huge. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. yes, you are. All right. Have you seen the giant? Have you seen? Well, yeah, I've seen it. I've, I've seen what is happening before me. I can, I can see it. I don't know quite know what to do with it yet. Um, 
Don't ever rush into something that God hadn't told you to rush into. Don't get in somebody else's other business if God hadn't given you the authority and the right to step in that business. He comes out every day to defy Israel. The king offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He'll give him a wife. He don't have to pay taxes. <laughs> we just finished taxes. David asked the soldier standing by, what will we get for killing him? What? What will we get? Who is this pagan Philistine that he is allowed to defy the armies of God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, that is the reward for killing him. So they're going through all of this. Look at this next slide. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing here anyway, you little right? <laughs> what are you doing down here on the front line? Aren't you supposed to be taking care of the sheep? You stink like one. Why are you even here? Why? You just came down to toy with us, didn't you? You just came down to see the fighting. You just came to see the action. Sometimes people just want to get in your business and be nosy just to see what's going on so they can taunt you or they can stoke the fire on. I'm, I'm preaching. Mm. Y'all better listen. Mm. We better listen to this. This is good teaching this morning. This is good accountability for us. You just want to see the battle. What have I done? I, that sounds like, see, I'm the youngest of eight. <laughs> <laughs> I said that many times. I had four sisters and I had three brothers. And he walked over to some other ones and he asked the same thing and received the same answer. So David is very inquisitive. Hey, tell me what's happening. Hey, tell me. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what, what, what is the reward again? Look at this next one. And the, anyway, the king sent for him. David's brothers have an opinion. How many of us have an opinion? They're like stinky socks. Mm. We all have one or two or three. Um, so David's brothers had an opinion about him, uh, about why he was there, about the purpose for being there. All David was doing was being obedient to his dad. He was just following directions. He was just doing what he was told to do. Not everybody is going to like what God calls you to do. Not everybody <laughs> right. is going to agree with you right. where you are and what God has called you to do in your journey. Not everybody's going to like that. Not everybody's going to see it. Saul had an opinion, as we're going to go on and look in a minute, because Saul said, well, hey, if you're going to go out there and knock yourself out like an idiot and you're going to stand out there, well, then you probably need to put on my armor. You probably need to use what I use. You probably need to wear what I wear. Because this is how, this will work. This is the key. It always works this way. Y'all know what I'm saying. There is no cookie cutter answer in everything. This is why each of us individually seek the direction of Holy Spirit. What are you saying about this situation right now? Because I guarantee you, we try to use an old method in a current situation. We're going to get our hindies whipped and we're going to miss it. But the beautiful thing is, is that we can hear from the Lord in every situation. What are you saying about this right here, right now? Light be like to be. And so see what happens is we trust, we put our confidence and our trust, let me read this right now, our trust and confidence is in God and the power of the Holy Spirit and not in the opinions of others. Amen. Amen. Let's look at this next one. Listen to this. Don't overlook this moment and this place that prepares you for the next moment and the next place. David was sent to the front line to deliver cheese and supplies. David was just being David. David was just being David. But when he got to where he was going, there was a yes. transition and a shift that took place in just being who he was. Amen. So we can't jump over process to perfection yes, because preparation is essential. 
<laughs> David was learning accountability to walk in his authority. Yes, amen. I know somebody who comes in here every Sunday morning and cleans the toilets before we get here. They don't ever get any recognition. They don't ever look for somebody to pat them on the back. I know that rescueology set up chair, and I am going to acknowledge them, set up, sets these chairs up for us on Sunday mornings. They're faithful to let us have this place. And I want to say thank you again. Yeah. Come June 1st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But what we learn now in this season, even if your season feels like you're drowning, yes, you're not. You're not drowning, I promise you. That song we sang, God is faithful time and time and again to do it over and over to deliver us, to heal us. Yes. Why? Because he's already done it. Yes, amen. And it is God's good pleasure to give to his children. It is the love of God to, that moves us and draws us. So this season of process and preparation will be a tool and a weapon for your next place. I always tell my children, short-term discomfort brings long-term productivity. Mm -hmm. Son, you don't have some short-term discomfort, Joshua Aaron, but you don't have long-term productivity because what you're learning right now will set a solid foundation for you to continue on the right path.
He said, I, I, I killed that bear. I killed that lion. He said, and I'll do this to the Philistine because it's time. See, God chose David to do that. Amen. And where you are right now, where you are in your life and what you're going through, I'm not saying the situation is what God, uh -huh, listen, is what God chose. But I am saying that God chose you Amen. to use you. He says in John, I have chosen you that you should go forth and bear fruit, fruit that would remain. He said, I've chosen you. Yes. See, because nobody can do what yes. you're doing Amen. where you're doing it because you have the anointing and your sphere of influence to make a difference. You are making a difference. Don't beat yourself up because you blew it in a few situations. It ain't about blowing it. But it is probably sometimes about apologizing for, for it in some tough situations. We don't like to apologize. But it is about humility and repentance. Because I guarantee you somebody would appreciate you better in your workplace if you say, look, I just screwed that whole thing up and I said something I wasn't supposed to say. Do you know what happens when the grace of God gets in that? And somebody hears you repent to them and say, I'm sorry? Hey, that opens heaven up over you. All right, y'all look at me like, don't you dare go there. <laughs> So he gives him, let's go on to that next screen. And I think we probably finished that. He says, oh, okay, okay, so David puts on his stuff. David was never meant to walk in Saul's anointing. David was never meant to walk the way Saul walked. Amen. David was never meant to do it the way Saul did it. Let me tell you, God is calling you in your giftings and your ability. And our anointing is really not our anointing. Yes, it's the anointing of the Holy One who lives in us. And let God lead you like God needs to lead you. Yes, and let amen. the other opinions of others go by the wayside. Because it don't fit you. Yes, amen. But here's what he did do. And he recognized. He recognized, I can't go in these. That is very key. I can't go in these. Now that, that is, now I feel like there's something corporate and personal in that statement. I can't go in these. What, it, what is these? Hang on a second. Yeah, no. Say that. Who said that? Yeah, I knew. What is yeah, it? Armor. He can't go in his armor. Well, what is this right now? I can't go in this. Something don't fit you anymore, LeBron. It used to, and it felt good, but you can't wear that anymore. It's like an old worn out t-shirt that's fixing to get thrown in the garbage because God's got a new mantle. God's got a new shirt for you. God's clothed you in his righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I can't do that. But here's what I can do. I can pick up five smooth stones. Right. Now, they, there is a legend that says uh, he had brothers. That's why he picked up five. That wasn't doubt and unbelief. The boy just went down there and got five smooth stones, okay? Don't make it bigger than what it is. He just got five, but he only needed one. Yeah. That's right. They went. So he puts them in his bag, he gets his staff and his sling. His staff, his staff that he was tending sheep with. I love this. His staff that he was on the backside taking care of those little old sheep. He brings his staff with him and he's got a slingshot and he starts across the valley. The Israelites saw Goliath as an impossibility, but David focused his vision and said, this is an opportunity.
opportunity. I want to know in this room this morning, is there anybody that is willing to look at your situation as an opportunity by God for victory and success this morning? Amen. today, right here, right now. How many of you know you're not promised tomorrow? In every circumstance and situation, you've only got a now moment. That is truth. We've only got right now. So what are you saying right here, right now, Father God? What are you saying right here, right now? He said, I come at you. In the name of the Lord of the armies of Israel, the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. I'm telling you that there is a God right here in this room and he is ever present 
and he is ever at work, and he is ever on your side, and he is ever going to take care of you, and he is never going to turn his back on you, and he is faithful to you. Yes. Yes. And everyone assembled there here will know that the Lord, yes, that is the witness of Holy Spirit in our lives right there in that phrase. And everyone assembled around you in your circumstances and situation will know that it is God who has delivered you. That it is God who made a way for you. That it is God who is working on your behalf. Everyone will know that the battle is the Lord's. And Goliath moved closer. He went out to attack him. And he run in for him. When we follow to the instruction, the instructions of Holy Spirit as He leads us, and we walk in the obedience of Christ as He's directed us, we cannot miss. Because it is not us. It was God who was at work through David. It is God who is at work through us. It is the power of God that is at work. It is the grace of God that is at work. So I don't have to figure out all the time how to do it. I just trust that God's already done it. And then the strategy of the Lord. See, once we put it in proper perspective of who God is, and his power and understanding that we come from a place of victory, then the light comes on and then the Lord says, now you just be who I've called you to be and function like I've called you to function and everything works out. We live from this place that says the battle is already won. We live from the place of victory. Your God in you is greater than any giant standing before you. How are we looking through the lenses of life this morning and of the Holy Spirit? Nothing is impossible. Stand to your feet this morning. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. That you are bigger than any mountain. You're bigger than any valley. You're bigger, bigger than any circumstance and situation. And God, you've proven yourself time and time again that you are faithful. So Father, we say we're tired of doing it our way and expecting you to bless us. Father, we just say we want to do it your way because there is assured victory in everything. And God, I thank you for what you're developing in us, through us, and, and around us. And God, I thank you that we are faithful in the small things that you said you'd make us master over much. I thank you that you said don't despise small beginnings because God, I thank you that nothing with you is impossible, nothing with you is small, nothing with you is too little, and you are already there. You have already made victory available. And Father, we need to awaken today. Awaken us, Holy Spirit. Awaken us to see you big today. God is bigger than depression. God is bigger than sickness and disease. God is bigger than emotional and verbal abuse. Thank you, God. Will you say yes? Yes. Yes. join you in your life and your light. And if you've never done that today, God is calling you and asking you to join him to have his eternal life. 
There's no magic formula. He just wants to know if you'll say yes to that. He's inviting you to come to him. If that's you today, just simply accept his invitation. Father, right now, I just thank you for divine healing that has taken place right now. Physically, emotionally, right now. And in relationships and finances. Father, I thank you for that you are giving clear vision and strategy on decisions that need to be made. Father, I thank you that uh, you are the deliverer, God. The deliverer. You have delivered us. So, Father, we praise you today. We thank you that you're big. And thank you. We say that you are more than enough. <laughs> you're the God of more than enough. Thank you, Lord. Father, we magnify you. Bless these people. I know that you have. That you're continuing to bless them all week and those that have been watching. And so, Father, we thank you for victory. And this is the confidence that we have in, have in you, that we ask anything according to your will. We know that you hear us and we have those petitions that we have desired. Thank you, Lord. Our hope is in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If God hears us for us. Amen.